Martina? Uh, hello, Senator. Uh, I was just uh, doing my taxes. Uh-huh. You do your own taxes? No, Senator. Huh. Hey, Martina, you okay? Yes. You sure? <laughs> what happened? What's wrong? My mother is dying. Oh, I'm sorry. She's in Guatemala. I'm so, so sorry. She's a good woman. My father died when I was a baby. And she was always so strong. I didn't even think that. And I'm here, and she's... She's all alone. And I have to go to her, right? Of course you do. I just won't be able to come back. an illegal alien? No, she's in process of getting her green card, but as long as her application is pending, she's not supposed to leave the country? Yeah, she can leave the country. She just can't get back in. So I understand. Okay, well, do, does she have an immigration attorney? She has done everything right, including sit and wait for three years since she put in her application. Now, how long does it take to get your green card? Uh, about a year. Okay, so obviously, big surprise, somebody in a federal building isn't working as quickly as we've come to believe that they all do. Her mother is dying. The woman should be allowed to go, shouldn't she? Yeah, she can go. She just she just can't come back. Look, it's one of those stupid rules. You cannot leave the country when you've got an application pending. All right, but we can do something about it, right? You didn't promise her anything, did you? Kind of. What'd you say? Just that we'd help her. Look, I honestly don't think that there's anything that we can do. Oh, come on, we can always do something. Okay, she leaves today at 5 o'clock, so we got to do it now. All right, just, just go. I'll meet you at the press conference. Thank you. Hey, Leon. I've got an immigration case for you. Oh, I've, I've never handled an immigration case. You say you want more responsibility, and when I finally give it to you... Oh, Jackie, I'm not, I'm not complaining. I just I want you to know I've never handled an immigration case. Yeah, well, no one else here has either. Well, why can't uh, one of the district offices handle it? She's not a California constituent. Then why are we doing anything? She's on the janitorial staff. Here? The senator promised her we'd help her. Does he just walk through the halls handing out cards? Martina Alvarez, green card pending. Her mother's dying in Guatemala, and she wants to go. Well, she's not coming back. I mean, even I know that. Yes, I tried explaining that to the senator already. California's minimum wage is higher than the federal minimum wage, $1.60 higher. But California's unemployment rate is about the same as the national rate. So I don't see how anyone can blame California's unemployment on a higher minimum wage, especially since most of California's job loss has been in the high-tech sector, where minimum wage is not a factor. Senator How do you respond to Senator Bowles' argument that raising the minimum wage actually hurts the poor? You know, I'd by like not to allowing... think... 
that Senator Bowles is really worried about the poor when he says that, but... Are you saying Senator Bowles doesn't care about the poor? No, no, listen, look, I understand Senator Bowles' uh, theory, but it is just a theory. You know, so, Alicia, have you ever worked for the minimum wage? While I was in college. Can you imagine trying to live on it today? Rather not. Well, try supporting a family on it. I know people who try to hold down two or three jobs and they still can't get through the month. Now, how is that right? Look, if anyone can prove that raising the minimum wage increases unemployment for the poor, I would be opposed to it. But the last time we raised minimum wage, unemployment did not go up. So I'm saying that we can afford to give the working poor a raise. I'm saying that we have to give them a raise, and I think that we should do it now and not waste another month debating it. Senator Sterling. Senator Sterling. Okay, Tom. Thanks. Still no time agreement on the minimum wage debate. Okay, so both sides are just going to be yelling at each other all day long? No, no one's going to go to the floor until there's a time agreement. Okay, so if you allow the Senate unlimited time to debate, nobody will say a word. But as soon as you set a time limit on the debate, suddenly everyone has something to say? It's human nature. If I give you an unlimited amount of time to do something, when are you going to do it? Never. Right. And if I give you until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when are you going to do it? Somewhere between 2 and 3. <laughs> See? Now you know how the Senate works. Leon! What do you hear? Uh, a lot of angry calls and emails against raising the minimum wage. Some business group must have a phone bank running. Said uh, we bankrupt small business, uh, put people out of work. What do you hear from the INS? Oh, right. Uh, well, they, they haven't found their file yet, so they'd call back when they do. How long ago was that? Half hour. Okay, so call them back. Jack, uh, did he finish his taxes yet? Oh. Not even close. Because they got a draft of the speech. I really need to run it by. No, let's let him finish his taxes first, and then he can go back to being a senator. Jackie, today's a perfect day to get out there for his first Senate speech. There's nothing going on out there. Yeah, before. I know, I know. Jackie, I need him out there today. He cannot participate in any debates until he gets his first speech out of the way. Come on, that's just a tradition. Yeah, a harmless one. We may as well follow, since he's broken so many other traditions already. You know, he's actually gained points waiting this long to give a speech. People are starting to think that maybe he's not an egomaniac. But if he waits any longer, they are going to start thinking he's afraid to get out there. Okay, how long is the speech? Thirteen and a half minutes. You timed it? No, but I've written a few speeches, you know. Okay, go. Good luck on getting his head out of those taxes. Five bucks, yeah, get him to look at it. You're on. You got two seconds? You ever filed 1099? Uh, you mean fill the form out myself? Yeah. No. Last time I tried to do my own taxes was in law school. Filed them six months late. Okay, I made $800 from two op-ed pieces. Isn't there a minimum threshold of some sort? Uh, look, I just want to check this speech with you. All right, what's the speech? The one I've been trying to get you to do for the last week or so. No, this can't be right. I'm paying more in Social Security taxes than income taxes? Uh, most people do, especially lower income. But look, uh, what about this speech? Am I really not allowed to debate until I give my first speech? Eh, it's not a written rule, but... Okay, let's do it. Today? Yes, today. I have to finish this worksheet. Great. Uh, take a look at it. I'll catch you on your way to the floor. Okay. I, I understand. I understand. What, what kind of exceptions are there to this rule? Okay, what about in the case of family emergencies? Exactly what I Thanks a lot. Look, uh, help me out here. There's got, there's got to be some way to get around this, right? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. I'll be sure to tell him that. It's supposed to be boring. Come on, Tommy, it's my first Senate speech. Why not say something real? Because nobody's listening, not to your first speech, and you don't want them to. A senator's first speech is not supposed to attract any attention. So that's why I'm trying to bore them with all this uh, Daniel Webster and Henry Clay Webster stuff. Webster and Clay are in there so you can remind everybody that some of our greatest senators were not elected, right. just like you. But I thought you said no one's going to be listening. Uh, okay, fine. Change whatever you want, but just don't get into the issue of the day stuff because you don't want to attract enemy fire your first time up there. As a prosecutor, Tommy, I can handle it. Yeah, in a courtroom, you only have one opponent who can stand up and fight with you. On the Senate floor, you got 99. Bring him on. Senator, I got an answer for you on the uh, Martina Alvarez green card question. Leon, we don't have time What's for this. Got, Leon? Uh, well, sir, it's pretty much as I, I thought. Uh, look, if, if she leaves the country... What she's doing at 5 p.m. today? Sir, if she leaves the country mid-application, there is absolutely no way she is getting back in. Well, everybody knows that. Come on, Leon, there's got to be some exception. I've never heard of one. Sir, I'm sorry, but there isn't. All right, that's great. What do I, what do I tell this woman? You've got to tell her not to go.
Senator. Yes? Martina Alvarez is here. Oh, um, okay. Okay, Martina. Hi. Hello there. I'm Bill Sterling. This is my son, Richard. Oh, it's nice to meet you, Richard. Hello, Senator Sterling. How old are you? I'm eight. Eight, wow. Listen, I'm really sorry to hear about your grandma. Thank you for helping us. Yeah, of course. It's nice meeting you. Come on in. Uh, you can mess up Jackie's desk while I talk to your mom, okay? Than I thought. You didn't know she had a son. So there's nothing you can do. I'm, I'm truly sorry. I guess I didn't realize how strictly these rules are interpreted, and I, and I shouldn't have given you the impression that I could do something, and I'm sorry. I understand. I appreciate you trying. You know, Richard was born here, was he? Yes. He's an American citizen. He's very proud of that. Huh. You know, he's your only child? Yes. He and my mother are very close. She would come and stay with us whenever she could. She would take care of him when I went to work. He loves her very, very much. He wants to say goodbye to her. It's important for him to say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, where does Richard go to school? McKinley Charter School. Does he like it? Oh, yes. Very much. He loves all his teachers. He gets all A's. Mm. He's going to be in the school play next month. Wow. <laughs> we love our life here. When I got this job, it was such an honor for me to work in the United States Senate. I don't want to lose what we have, but what else can we do? I understand. Martina, my advice to you is don't go. But we are only going for one day, just to give her a kiss, to see her one last time. Maybe they'll let us back in. No, Martina, they're very strict about this rule. When I told Richard his grandma was dying, he didn't cry. He just went into his room and packed the bag she bought for him, the type with the wheels. He'd never been to Guatemala, and she said that one day he could visit her and use it. He said this was the day. It's very hard for me to tell you this. But I would not risk everything that you've worked for here. I wouldn't. We have to get to the airport. If they let us back in the country, I will be at work here tomorrow night. And I will see you then. Hey, Jackie, you can get Martina's flight numbers, would you? Oh. Okay, Martina, we're gonna keep working on this for you, okay? Senator Tommy's waiting for you. Okay, give my love to your mother. Good luck. God bless right. you. It's nice meeting you. Would the minority leader yield? I yield to the majority leader. While it is true that 50 cents is the largest increase in the minimum wage we have ever passed, I believe that any increase less than one dollar now Just would be an luck insult. Just our luck to go a couple of rounds. What took you so long? Bert. Hey, Bill, finally taking the floor, huh? Yep. Doing what an honor it is to be a senator. Yes, I am. We'll be out of your way in a minute here. We just got to do our thing for the C-SPAN cameras and then get back to our real work. Good luck to you. Thank you. ...has failed to keep pace with inflation. Workers have lost nearly all the gains they achieved three years ago, and we would have to raise the minimum wage by more than $3 to bring it back to the real value it had in 1968. The real question is what kind of country we want to be. Do we want to be the kind of country where the rich prosper and the poor suffer? 
or do we want to be the kind of country where the rising tide lifts all boats? Uh, that's not a good sign. Well, majority well, leader yield. Senator Preston wants the floor. He could go on for hours. We may have to delay your speech. Raising the minimum wage always sounds nice, and sometimes it's the right thing to do. Now, most of the senators on this side of the aisle are prepared to vote for a reasonable increase, but we cannot agree to an increase of one dollar. Anything over 25 cents could be a blow to the economy and would actually hurt low-wage workers the, the most minority leader by making yield. it. I will yield to the senator from California so that he can deliver his first Senate speech, but I will do so after I finish with my colloquy with distinguished majority leader. Will the minority leader yield for a question? I should point out to the newest member of this body that it is traditional for a senator to make his first speech before he is recognized on the floor for any other purpose. Well, I, you know, I have to admit that I, that I find this debate much more interesting than my speech, which frankly didn't say very much. So can I skip the speech and just ask the question? Okay, Senator, go ahead. What would you settle for? Excuse me? Well, you're at 25 cents, he's at a dollar. What would you settle for? Well, I'm afraid it's a little bit more complicated than that, Senator. Is it? What would you settle for? Well, the minority leader has the floor. You need to address your question to him, Senator. You know you're not going to get a dollar if the biggest increase ever was 50 cents. You know he's not going to settle for 25 cents. So I suggest the absence of a quorum. Mr. President, um, I request that the quorum call be dispensed with. Hearing no objections, so ordered. I rise today mindful of what Cato the great Roman senator said... I had to go and do it, didn't you? Well, why not? I mean, obviously, they're going to get somewhere in the middle. And then just get them moving. Yeah, well, that isn't exactly how the deal is done around here. And they rather haggle in private. If you'd let them go on with their act, you could be halfway through your speech by now. And utterly destroyed. Oh, boy, when he starts with the Carthaginians, we might as well go home. we go on for hours. ...to overthrow righteousness, to the many examples of evil and its endeavor to supplant good. You might ask, how does that relate to what faces our country today? I'll keep an eye on the floor, let you know when you can give your speech. Okay, can you let me get through my 1099 first? You really should do it today, Senator. Just a few concentrated hours. So, Senator, Congressman Hughley called about the Imperial Valley Water Project, the Los Angeles Police Commissioner called about the crime bill, and Senator Robertson wants office time to discuss the highway bill. Okay, thank you, Pat. Leon. Uh, who'd you talk to at INS? Uh, someone at the Enforcement Division. Uh, by the name of? Uh, sec um, Stephanie Minkowski. Okay, where's her office? Uh, immigration headquarters. You can't do this. Thank you. If you talk to anybody at INS, it has to be the commissioner. Senators do not talk to mid-level bureaucrats. Why not? Because it's, it's ignoring the chain of command and it's completely inappropriate. I will be back in one hour. Excuse me. Uh, do you have an appointment upstairs, sir? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, you can't go upstairs without an appointment. Uh, sorry, Senator. Uh, go right ahead. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, is this the enforcement division? Yes. Uh, do you know where Stephanie Minkowski is? Uh-huh. Down the hall. Go past the copy machine. Go past the cubicles. Don't turn left. Don't turn right. First door you come to. So straight ahead. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Stephanie? Yeah. Hi, how you doing? I'm Bill Sterling. <laughs> oh, yes. Um... How are you? Senator Sterling, what are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to talk? Well, you should, uh, we should, um, we should go upstairs to the commissioner's office. I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure he'd want to see you. No, I, I just want to talk to you. You know, sometimes you can take a problem too far up the ladder, you know what I mean? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, well, the commissioner doesn't know Martina Alvarez. I, mean, I, I know that you do. Senator, I'm not, I'm not a caseworker. I, I... I've never met the woman. I know, but you know who she is, right? I mean, you've read her application, you know her story. And you know she has an eight-year-old son named Richard who was born here. He's a citizen of this country. I mean, you probably even know that he's getting straight A's at the McKinley Charter School, am I right? Senator. 
Oh, is that your daughter? My niece. Oh, how old? Eight. Mm. Senator, I really think that you should be talking to the commissioner. You know what? I'm sure the commissioner's a great guy, but he's dealing with policy issues. You know, he doesn't do the work. You know, the commissioner doesn't know that Martina Alvarez filed a perfect application for a green card three years ago, and we just lost it. It should have been approved over a year ago. And if it had, Martina would be with her mother right now. Senator, we have a backlog of five million applications pending. I know you guys are overburdened. Overburdened? <laughs> that doesn't come close. You think you're upset that we lost this woman's file? This is my department. How do you think I feel? Believe it or not, we take each application very seriously, and we are very embarrassed when something like this happens. But we're only human. It's human error. It's bound to happen. I just wish it would happen again. I'm afraid I'm not following. Martina and her son are just about to get on a flight to Guatemala. Then she won't be able to come uh, and back. And to my shame, I tried to talk them out of it. But she and her son need to be there. I mean, if your mother was dying, right, my mother, we'd be there. Nothing could stop us. They just want to hold her hand, say their goodbyes. They're only going to be out of the country for one day. So it hardly seems fair that we would penalize them for one day when we lost her application for... How long was it? Too long. So look, here's what I'm thinking. What do you say you and I go to Dulles Airport tomorrow night, we meet them at the gate, and we escort them through immigration? I couldn't possibly do that. Oh, sure you can. I mean, you know, you must know the agents who work at Dulles Arrival. Most of them, yes. But I've always... Stop short of asking them to violate federal no. regulations. No. No, 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 no. I wouldn't ask them to do that. I'd just ask them to make a human error. Oh. <sighs> Senator. You're new on the job. And, for, and from what I've seen, I'm, I'm actually a fan. <laughs> so if you leave right now, I'd be willing to pretend... We never had this conversation. You know, when I was in the DA's office, we put a lot of people away. But we also looked the other way a lot, too. Decided not to prosecute certain kinds of crimes, gave first offenders a break when it looked like they deserved one. You know, just tried to be fair. I think you try and do the same. For the last time, I, I, I cannot do what you're asking. They don't make it up the elevators, do they? Who? The people who put their lives in your hands. The immigrants. They don't uh, make it up this high. Senator, I can't help you. Or her. You don't want to get too good at this job, Stephanie. Thank you. I mean, for the time. You are still working on your taxes. Yep. Did you pull it on either? <laughs> no, I went to sleep at about three. Hey, what's the time difference in Guatemala? I think they're an hour behind. <sighs> okay, so she's with her mom right now. Let's get on a plane in a few hours. Let me ask you a question. What if I met her at her plane? I tried to what? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. You would just make it worse. I guess. Look, you did pretty much everything that you could possibly do, and probably more than you should have. Right. So. That's right. So... I'm just going to leave you to your obsessive-compulsive disorder. Look, I'm not obsessive-compulsive. This is my responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility to do their taxes. That's why accountants were invented. No, no, it's my responsibility to do my own taxes now that I'm a senator. I mean, I'm on the committee that writes the tax laws. I should be able to figure out how to comply with the laws that I've written. You haven't written any tax laws it's yet. It's the principle of the thing. Okay. Besides... What? I've always done my own taxes. See? No, I'm not... I'm not. I know. You're not. You're not. 
What's this hearing about? Tax simplification. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Uh, they have this hearing every April, and they promise to make next year's returns easier to understand. They keep that promise? Uh, simplification is apparently not as simple as you think. All right, call Leon. I need something from the office. Our overall strategy at the IRS is to be customer-focused. The IRS website has become extremely popular among taxpayers as a time-saving device. Commissioner, uh, the 1040 form is your standard tax return, isn't it? Yes, that's correct, Senator Sterling. Okay, well, this is my 1040 for this year, and I've been working on it for about 10 or 12 hours over the last few days, and I'm only halfway through it. Um, how much time does it take the average taxpayer to get through this form? About 27 hours, Senator. Oh, so I'm not doing so bad. Well, well, most people hire a tax preparer to do their returns. Oh, yes, of course they do, Commissioner, because you've made it so complicated. The 1040 has 144 pages of instructions and 19 separate worksheets. We don't write the tax law, Senator. We simply interpret them. Well, that's a very good point, Commissioner. Actually, the tax law is written in this room. Um, am I the only one here doing my own tax return? Uh, Commissioner, don't you think that the tax code would get much simpler very quickly if the members of this committee had to prepare their own tax returns? Can I take the fifth on that, Senator? Bert! Didn't appreciate what you pulled out there on the floor yesterday, Bill. Come on, why can't you guys just make a deal on the minimum wage? You move up, they move down, we're done. Excuse us, gentlemen. They don't want a deal. They just want to blame us for not making a deal. That's why they're asking for a dollar. Twice what it's ever been increased. They don't even have all the Democrats willing to go that high. It's a joke. You're telling me that they don't want to raise the minimum wage? Well, not now they don't. They'd rather hammer us over the head with it in the election. And right now, one of my own people is out there walking right into their trap. Bowles is pushing an amendment for tax breaks for small business. So you can put a tax amendment on a minimum wage bill? This is why you never want to be leader, Bill. In the Senate, anyone can amend anything with anything. Now, I tried to talk Bowles out of it. I told him they'd just say we were asking for tax cuts for the rich while they're fighting for the working man. But he wanted to do his thing. So now we're even farther away from a compromise. Not even talking about the same thing anymore. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Tommy, I want you to write me an amendment. Amendment? To what? Uh, Senator, Commissioner Jarvis is here to see you. Commissioner of what? Immigration. No kidding? He's waiting in reception. Hey, I offered this guy water, I offered him coffee, he doesn't want anything, and he doesn't look happy. What did you do over there yesterday? It's, it's a crazy rule. Oh, really? Want to try that out on the IRS? Found any rules in those tax forms you think shouldn't apply to just you? Well, yeah, I just discovered I have to do a separate return for eight hundred dollars in ten ninety nine income. I have to pay self employment taxes, even though I'm not really self employed. This all a joke to you? The law? You think it's funny? I took an oath of office, Senator. I thought you did too. Yes, I took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution. Not every tripwire bureaucrats lay out there for decent people trying to play by the rules. I mean, come on, the woman's mother is dying. You want to write a new rule for every possible situation? Every immigrant who's having personal problems or financial difficulties or is just feeling homesick. Homesick? You do that, and you will force the immigration system in this country to grind to a halt. This woman's been waiting three years. Yeah. How about we make it ten? Because if we start dealing with exceptions to every rule, that's how long the average application will take. You lost her application for over a year. I make a call and your office magically finds it in under 45 minutes and you're telling me it could be more inefficient? I'm telling you, trying to induce a federal official to commit a crime... It's not a crime! And I'm sure you can explain that to the FBI and the Senate Ethics Committee. Sir, it is my job It here. is not your job to use your office to bully one of my people into ignoring the law and doing whatever the hell you want. And you're going to find that out, Senator. So did you at least apologize to him? Apologize? Not exactly. Uh, I can just imagine. You think he's going to go to the Ethics Committee? 
He certainly could. Or he could go straight to justice. Oh, he'd look like a jackass. Unless he finds a prosecutor who wants to make his name by taking down a senator. Yeah, but senators pressure bureaucrats every day. It's the only way to get anything done. How is this any different? The U.S. attorney could argue that you used improper influence. Improper? Yeah, asking a federal official to ignore the law. It's not a law, Jackie. It's a guideline. Yeah, and especially with all the spotlight on INS since 9-11. They should be focusing on keeping out terrorists rather than persecuting hardworking immigrants. Look, all they're doing is screwing everything down tight so they can hide behind regulations and cover their asses instead of actually applying a little common sense. I mean, do you think that if Martina Alvarez was the CEO of some Anglo-American conglomerate that she'd have this problem? Yes, I do. He's not going to justice. He's not going to the FBI. He's not going anywhere. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Why not? If he wanted to kill you, he wouldn't have come here. He wouldn't have even called. So? So you're saying he wants something? I'm afraid so. What could he possibly want from a junior senator? He doesn't need anything from us. And it's not like he's up for confirmation, and he's got plenty of friends around here. Maybe he wants to own a member of the Appropriations Committee. So as long as he's got this hanging over your head, he owns your vote on his budget every year. Well, that's the best case scenario. Oh, you're a ray of sunshine, Tommy. The thing is, we don't know what he wants. It could be anything, but he does want something. So now you have to go find out what it is. No, I'm not going to talk to him. You go to him, you start by apologizing, you let him yell at you for a little while, and then you say, uh, how can we work this out? Which is something I assume you did not say to him while he was in this room. No, I did not. Well, that's what he was waiting for you to say. So now, you're going to go say it. He's going to spit out what he wants. Don't agree to it. You bring it back, tell us what it is, and we'll all decide if it's something you can live with. You have the amendment? Give me five minutes. I urge this body to consider whether burdening small businesses with an increased minimum wage is the proper thing to do in this economic environment. Well, this guy can talk. But if we do choose to do that, it's only right to mitigate this burden by enacting the package of tax revisions. When Senator Bowles sits down, you get up and offer your amendment. You mean if Senator Bowles sits down? You have to stand up so uh, the presiding officer can allow you to speak next. And then we have to call him Mr. President. Even though he isn't. It means president of the Senate. No, no, but he's not president of the Senate. He's sitting in for the president of the Senate. Is this really what you want to talk no, about? No, no, no. no. You're right. Stand up. You say you want to offer a second degree amendment. Second degree amendment. That means it's an amendment to Senator Bowles' amendment. That way they have to vote on your amendment first, which nobody's going to want to do. Got it. And you read your amendment and we'll see if we get anyone's attention. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, I yield back the balance of my time. Uh, Mr. President, the chair recognizes the senator from California. I would like to offer an amendment. Second degree amendment. A uh, second degree amendment to Senator Bowles' tax amendment. My amendment is also a tax amendment. Uh, my amendment would require all members of the United States Senate to prepare their own tax returns. Uh, Mr. M Mr. President, I've been working on my tax returns for 21 hours over the last week or so, and I think I still have several hours left until I have to get them to the post office. But in working on my tax returns, I have learned more about what's wrong with the tax code than I have in any finance committee hearing. And I can only wonder how much simpler our tax returns would be if the people who write our tax laws were Mr. forced... Mr. President, I suggest the absence of a quorum. <laughs> Mr. President, I ask that the Senate stand in recess until tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Object. I, I object. To what? Recess. We can't let him shut us down. We're going to have to work something out here, Pete. Otherwise, he's just going to stay out here hammering us all with this tax thing. My office, right now. Mr. President, I request that the quorum call be dispensed with. Good word. Hearing no objection? Deal time. No order. Hey, Bill. Come on in. Bert and I were talking about how we're going to clear up this mess on the floor. Oh, what mess? Oh, all these amendments that are cluttering up the bill. Oh, well, there's only two amendments. I mean, I suppose if you give me more time, I'll think of some more. No, no, that's all right. You've done enough. <laughs> So why weren't you two talking about clearing up this mess when there was only one amendment out there? 
Look, Bill, I've talked to Senator Bowles, and he said that he's willing to withdraw his amendment if you'll withdraw yours. We think it's better to try to get a clean vote on the bill. I do, too. Good. Then we've got a deal. So when are we voting on minimum wage? Well, we'll come to a time agreement soon. Oh, you mean like we've been doing for the last three weeks? Listen, Bill, the truth is neither one of us has enough votes to force the other one's hand. So, yeah, it can take some time to resolve something like this. But if we can get the debate back to just the minimum wage, then we can... Yeah, you can let people work in checkout counters and frying chicken wait another six months before they can pay their electric bill. Okay, look, here's the deal. I'm going to go back out there and talk about my amendment until about 11 o'clock. You really want to do this? Okay, huh? then I'm going to go back to my office, finish my tax returns, and then get them to the post office before midnight. Then I'm going to come back out to the floor tomorrow and talk about why I think senators should do their own tax returns. Maybe talk to some TV talk shows. They'll love the idea. Don't you think? Unless we do what? Oh. Reach a time agreement right now on when we're going to vote on minimum wage and how much of an increase we're going to vote on. But you know it's not going to be a dollar. You know it's got to be more than 25 cents. So what's it going to be? I mean, you make this deal now and you will not hear another word out of me about senators doing their own tax returns. But not until next year, anyway. Yes. The commissioner can see you now. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for seeing me, commissioner. Sit down, senator. Thank you. <clears throat> so? So. What do you want? Excuse me? I mean, is this all you want? Commissioner of INS, you're an ambitious guy. I'm sure you have your eye on something a little higher up the ladder. Attorney General, head of Homeland Security. That's not up to me, that's up to the president. Oh, no, it's not. Actually, it's up to the Senate. How many votes did you get when you were confirmed for this job? A hundred. Then you were at Treasury for two years. Uh, you were confirmed for that position, too. A hundred? What's your point? Do you know how many it takes to hold up a nomination? Yeah. One. So, you've come here to threaten me. No, no, no. I, I came here to see if we can work this out. Aren't you going to ask me what I want? What you want. I want you to remember why you came to government. Because I don't think it was about being a power player. My bet is you wanted to do some good, wanted to help people, and I don't think you get a chance to do a lot of that, at least not anymore. So I want you to help this woman and her son. Her plane lands at 9.08 tonight. Now, she's coming home with the hope that she and her son can get their lives back, lives that they've worked very, very hard for. Now, he's a citizen, and she, she'll make a great one. I've seen her work every night, and I can guarantee that. So I want you to let them return. That's what I want. It's the only deal I'm interested in making. The other choice is that we can go at each other hammer and tong. And my staff says that you won't get anywhere taking this to justice, and I can write out the Senate Ethics Committee. It could be very embarrassing to me, but uh, I'll keep my seat on appropriations. I'll still be there. And if I feel like it, I can study every single expense that your department makes. And I don't mean your bureau. I mean this office that we're sitting in. And next year, when you come in front of us, I will spend hours questioning you on your choice of hotels and rental cars and exactly who you take to dinner and what they ate. Or we can put this behind us. You can accept my sincere apology. And we can help this woman. Anything else? No. You can leave now, Senator. It will be a clean bill. There will be no amendments, and we expect something close to a unanimous vote. Well, I 
just uh, want to compliment my friend, the distinguished majority leader, for his willingness to reach a reasonable compromise. I, I think a 40 cent increase in the minimum wage is a reasonable step to take this time. Yeah, we very much appreciate the leadership the minority leader has showed in bringing his caucus together to reach this compromise. It really could not have been done without Burke showing the way on his side of the aisle. And believe me, I know how difficult that can be. <laughs> No more questions. Thank you all. Sorry, no more no questions, more questions this time. Thank, Thank you, you all very much. It's amazing. That's an $800 a year increase you just got for minimum wage workers, Senator. You did a great job, Tommy. No, no. That amendment was your idea, sir. All right. They get out of here so I can do my taxes. It was good work, Senator. So you can do that speech tomorrow, right? Yeah, you can count on it. You know, you've really got a heart of darkness thing going on here. Don't you start. I'm not being obsessive about this. You're not? No. I want to wear my California returns. Did I just drop it on the other side of the desk? Oh, here. Ah. Here it is, sir. Thank you. Good night, Senator. Good night, Tommy. Signed and sealed. Woo! 11.30. Post office next to Union Station is open till midnight. Yeah. Her shift started at 11 o'clock. she'd made it through, she, she'd be here by now. Yeah. You want me to mail those for you? No. I want to do that. <laughs> That's not obsessive at all. No, it's not. It's the principle of the thing. <laughs> Can I walk you out? No, I have some work to do. All right. Good night, Jack. Good night, Senator. Day American Dreams. Gotta show him that you care. Superstar That's Vanessa right. Carlton guest stars as Dusty Springfield. And hoping. But in a night when everything can change. Are you breaking up with me? Something sudden and unexpected. Well, go inside and get your mother. Will lead a family to an uncertain future. All new American Dreams, NBC Sunday.